Sorry, I have to record this. And um, our second unit has to do with geology. Okay? Anyone know what geology is? Ethan Yan? The study of the earth. The study of the earth, a little more specifically. You are right. I just need a little bit more. Because we can say the study of the earth, like the atmosphere in the air, but geology specifically refers to what? Here we go. Okay, landed. Yes, the lands, the rocks, the dirt, the soil, those kinds of things. Okay, so we're going to read the ending of the article together. This is one that you can write on, so I didn't make you copies, right? We talked about you can have either your highlighter or a pen or pencil. When we're finished with this, it will go in the handout section of your binder, not your notes. It will go in handout, but we are going to use it throughout class today, so I will wait till the end of the way. But once you get it, write your name somewhere up here on top in the white space, and then we'll get started. When we read in my class, or we read aloud, which isn't super often, but if we do, um, so we will be a little popcorn read. So I will start, okay? Once I'm done reading, I've read my however much I want to, I will call on someone to read. You'll read two paragraphs, okay? Two paragraphs, and then you popcorn to someone else, the old, which just means you call on someone else to start reading. The only rule is if you're a boy, you can popcorn to a girl, the girl, you gotta popcorn to a boy. So you go boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. The other rule if you don't know where we are when you get called on, you do get a warning. Okay? You gotta make sure you're following along and you know where we are. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Yeah. I'm pretty sure eventually a boy is gonna have to call on a boy because you only have like four to five girls. No, this this will call on a girl, just a girl may go more than once. Which is fine. All right. And you can say please stop. Okay. So for our next unit, this uh, geology unit having to do with um, the Earth's surface, the rocks, landforms, and things like that, there are three main processes that we're going to talk about over and over and over again. Weathering, erosion, and deposition. Okay? So as we read, make sure you're listening for those three. Your name should be somewhere up here in the white space. Yes, those are the three we're going to talk about. Okay. All right. Weathering. Pebbles and sand are pieces of rock. Pebbles are pretty big. You can count a handful of pebbles. Pieces of sand, however, are tiny. You can't count the particles in a handful of sand. All pebbles and sand particles start out as huge masses of rock the size of mountains. How do mountains break down, then, into pebbles and sand? Underline this sentence here. All pebbles and sand particles start out as huge masses of rock the size of mountains. It's kind of interesting. Every small rock was at one time a piece of a bigger rock, even pieces of sand. Okay? So the question becomes, how do these massive rocks get broken down into smaller rocks? And that's what we're talking about. The answer is weathering. Put a box around that word, weathering. That's our first important term here. Weathering is the breaking of rocks into smaller pieces. So we're going to underline the breaking of rocks into smaller pieces. That is the definition for our term, weathering. Do I have any question? Yes. Weathering happens to all rocks when they are exposed to water, air, and changing temperatures. Physical weathering. Rocks break down in two ways. Physical weathering makes rocks smaller, but does not change the rocks in any other way. When a big rock falls from the side of a cliff, it breaks into lots of smaller rocks. All the minerals in the small rocks are the same as the minerals that were in the big rock. Okay, so weathering has to do with how rocks are broken down into smaller pieces. There are two ways that happen. The first one is physical weathering. Okay, we have a box around that. That's why I have a number one on top of it. 
This is the first way rocks are broken down, by physical weathering. The definition of that is, this makes rocks smaller, but does not change the rocks in any other way. This would be like if I had a big chunk of granite rock, and I threw it on, a, on the ground, and it broke in half into two pieces. Have I changed the rock in any way besides making it smaller? No, I still have the exact same substance I had before, right? Granite rock. Now I just have two pieces of granite rock, right? That is physical weathering. There are lots of ways that rocks get broken down into smaller pieces, but each time you still have the same substance you had before. Correct? Okay. Hold on a minute. When rocks get hot and then cold, sometimes they can crack. Sometimes water gets into cracks in rocks. Water expands when it freezes. It can expand enough to break big sections of rock along the crack. When ice melts, the rock may break into smaller pieces. Raise your hand if you've ever put um, like a water bottle or something in the fridge or even made ice cubes in the fridge. Okay. Have you ever noticed that when you put a water bottle or I'm sorry, not the fridge, the freezer, the freezer, that's what I meant. Have you ever noticed that when you put a water bottle or even any type of water really into the freezer, it freezes bigger than when you first put it in. Okay. So if you put a water bottle into the freezer with this much water in it, when it's frozen, it, the water level goes up to like here, okay? If you haven't done it, try it at home. It's really interesting. The reason why that happens is as water freezes, so be with me, as water freezes, the molecules in the water begin to spread apart, okay? They don't get bigger. You don't have any more water than what you had before, but when water freezes, the molecules stop moving and they spread out, okay? That's why it looks bigger than what it was before. When that happens with a rock, okay, if, well, let's talk about, let's say, like, maybe there was a rock and there was, like, an earthquake or something and there's now a crack in the rock, okay? So we have a rock that looks kind of like this, with a little crack in it, okay? If water gets into this crack right here, okay, it fills up, right, like it fills like a little puddle in there. If it gets really cold and the water freezes, will that water expand? It doesn't have a choice. When the water pushes against the rock, sometimes it causes that crack to push deeper. Right? If you have a crack in something and you begin to pull it like this and it gets bigger, right? The crack goes deeper. Okay, well then, then the water warms up again and the water seeps down into the crack even further. That's what water does, right? It fills it all a little crack. Okay, well then what happens if this water freezes and it expands and pushes against the rock? Well, now the crack gets bigger again. Okay, the water melts, goes down into the crack again, it freezes the next night, now it cracks the rock all the way, and now we have two pieces of rock. You see what I'm saying? Okay, that's just one example. That's one way the rocks can be broken down to smaller pieces, by ice freezing and causing the rock to expand. Okay, Parker? Okay, um, sometimes the drawing uses granite and blue. Sure. Uh, the ice cream part. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, from the water expanding. Very good. Landon. For weathering. There are other materials that can be broken down, but the term weathering specifically refers to breaking rocks down. Good question, though. All right, turn the page. Another way that rocks can be broken down is when you have the roots of trees and bushes that can grow down into cracks in rocks. Roots of trees and bushes are actually much stronger than you think they are. Okay, They can cause rocks to break apart as well if they grow into them enough. As the roots grow, they make the cracks bigger. Sometimes the cracks even get so big that the rocks break apart. When rocks bang into one another, they get worn down. Rubbing, grinding, and banging is called abrasion. Okay, put a box around the word abrasion. The definition of that term, rubbing, grinding, and banging is called abrasion. Okay, if I take two rocks and I bang them together, what's going to happen? 
Hannah? Very good. The parts that I'm rubbing together are going to, are going to have little tiny like dust pieces almost fall off, correct? Okay. That is abrasion. What happens if I take those rocks and I rub them together for like an hour? How are they going to look when I'm done? Ethan? Good. What, how about the surfaces that I'm rubbing together? How are they going to look, Ethan? Be very smooth. Very good. Okay. Raise your hand if you've ever dealt with um, sandpaper or girls even like filing your nails. Okay. That's an example of abrasion as well. When you take a surface and begin to rub it together and you cause it to smooth or grind down, that is an abrasion. Now that can happen with rocks. Okay, they can fall, let's say there's like a landslide and the rocks fall down the hill. As they fall and crash into other rocks, they cause little pieces to split off. Okay, that would be an, another example of physical weathering. Well, I'm going to go, go on. Abrasion is a kind of physical weathering. It happens when rocks fall in landslides, tumble in flowing water, or even crash around in waves. Wind can blow sand against rocks. This sand blasting weathers the rocks as well. Oh, turn the page. Nathan, pick up there, please. Chemical weathering. Chemical weathering happens when minerals in rocks are stained by chemicals in water. Okay, pause. Put a box around chemical weathering. Our definition, minerals in rocks are changed by chemicals in water or air. Then put a number two off to the side and circle that. This is our second type of weathering. Okay? So there are two ways rocks are, rocks are broken down. Physical weathering or chemical weathering. Now, chemical weathering is different. Physical weathering we just discussed is the exact same rock, same type of rock, just broken down into smaller pieces, right? Chemical weathering, however, is different. In chemical weathering, the actual composition of the rock the minerals that make up what that rock is made of, that gets changed. So now you don't have the same substance afterwards that you had before. Okay? All right, Nathan, keep going. So starting minerals change into new substances. Many rocks contain iron. When oxygen in the air comes in contact with iron, the iron in the rock can rust. Rust is iron. Oxide. Iron oxide is softer than other iron minerals. This causes the rock to break apart faster. Good. Pop her into a girl. Carbon dioxide gas is in the air. In the air, dissolves in water droplets. This makes acid. The acid droplets can fall to the acid. Acid dissolves the calcite. Calcite, uh huh. paragraphs. weathering okay so this article here just gave you a couple different ways that can happen one is when minerals in the rock actually react with oxygen and water okay so um, raise your hand if you if you have if you've ever experienced like rust like maybe you left your bike outside and the wa and the metal got rusty or you have like iron um, maybe like a patio chair that got kind of orange and crusty looking okay good all right that's rust okay 
Rust happens when iron interacts with water and oxygen. Now, when a metal rusts, it is much weaker and breaks apart a lot easier. That's why you don't want to leave your bike outside in the rain, or, and then, like, um, eventually you want to throw away your old patio furniture or whatever it is, okay? Because a rusted metal will break down a lot faster than a regular metal, okay? So, when you have a rock that iron in it actually dissolves into rust, that rock will now break apart more easily. You see what I'm saying? Okay? That is an example of chemical weathering. Another way that can happen is with acid rain. Acid rain is more common in areas where there is more pollution in the air. So think like a bigger cities, uh, machine factories, things like that. What happens is pollution gets into the air, which then gets into the water vapor in the air. And what happens when you have water vapor in the air? Well, we now know that when it rises, it condensates, right, and comes back into water droplet form. Well, if you had dirty water vapor air, you're going to have dirty rain. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So that polluted rain, as it comes down, is what causes uh, chemical weathering sometimes. Okay. Um, you see this more on, like, uh, big monuments, gravestones, statues, things like that. Um, over time, acid rain can cause them to dissolve and get weaker. Okay. Now, this acid rain is not going to, like, melt your skin off if you walk outside into acid rain. Okay. But it's not great for you, but it's not, you're not going to notice it. However, over time, it can cause rocks and things to break down. Okay? Another example is salt water. Okay? Um, iron, rocks, things like that, get, they get weaker near salt water because the salt causes a chemical reaction in the rock, causing it to get kind of like, think about like Swiss cheese. It's kind of like little holes in it. You know what I'm saying? Like pumice stone or like, um, have you ever seen like those fossils from the ocean that look like coral? Uh, they like break. They're, they're really brittle and fragile. That's what a chemical, a chemically weathered rock would look like. Okay. I used to have the book, like the actual book that I made the copies of this from, and I could show you the pictures, and I can't find it. So just trust me. It looks like Swiss cheese. I know. Landon. Oh yeah. Parker. Oh. So my mom is like really serious about gardening. Mm -hmm. So um, there are like shovels and stuff left out all the time, mm -hmm. and they get like pretty rusty. Yep, that would be why. Good point. All right, erosion and deposition. How do you just finish reading? Correct. Okay, pop one to a boy, please. Mm -hmm. No matter where you live, the land around you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Pause. Read the title, please. <laughs> no matter where you live, the land around you can be used to. Some parts of the land might be low or flat, and others might be high or tilted. First surface has a great variety of natural features and places called land. Some land forms are the result of changes to earth's surface by water, wind, or ice. A beach is a result of changes to a beast is a result. I keep hurting this one. That's okay. A beast is one example. A church can be performed. A little bit of is playing in the sand. And there is so much sand, where did it all come from? Was it made there or did it come from some other place? Much of the sand on the beach came from the mountain. First, what did it happen? Water, wind, or ice. Only growth not from the ground. Very good. All right, a lot of information in that paragraph there. First thing we're going to underline is much of the sand on the beach came from mountains. Okay. If it's true that all smaller rocks came from a one time bigger rock, then sand, which is a very tiny particle of a rock, had to come from something. Okay, and it did. Next term we're going to look at is erosion. I told you those three words we're going to look at uh, a lot in this unit are weathering, erosion, and deposition. Erosion is when the small pieces of rock have been moved. Okay, 
Another definition for that, it is the taking away of weathered rock. Ethan, are you underlining this, bud? Good. Okay. And then the last term we're going to look at is sediment. This is just the fancy term for pieces of weathered rock. Okay. So when you have those smaller pieces of rock that have been broken off, that is a sediment. Okay. Now, erosion. Once the rock is broken down to a smaller piece, that's weathering, okay, when that small piece of rock gets picked up by something and moved, that is erosion. So whether that small rock falls into a river and gets carried downhill, whether it falls off the hill in a landslide and tumbles down the hill, whether it's maybe a small piece of sand that gets picked up by wind and carried somewhere else, that moving of weathered rock or sediment is called erosion, okay? Okay. Um, I can't remember who, Reagan, did you read? Okay, popcorn to a girl, please. As long as water keeps flowing, the bits of sand keep moving downstream. When the river enters the ocean, the water flows down. The sand settles to the bottom of the ocean. A settling set of sediments is called deposition. Deposits of sand from beaches all over the world. Very good. All right, last big term I told you about, deposition. So put a box around deposition. And then we're going to underline the settling of sediments is called. That's the definition of deposition, settling of sediments. Now, our key word for deposition is drop. So below that, in quotation marks, I want you to write the word drop. And then underline the D in drop and the D in deposition. Okay? That's your clue. Deposition is when those small sediments have been carried and carried and carried, and now they're dropped off somewhere else. Okay? So, let's go back to the river example. A small piece of rock got, fell into a river. The river carries that sediment for a while. Eventually, that river has to stop flowing, correct? It has to end somewhere. Wherever that rock falls, that's where it is deposited. Do you see what I'm saying? Let's go to the wind example. The pieces of sand get broken off of a rock. You got small bits of, of uh, rock there. The wind picks up the sand particles and begins to blow it. That's erosion, right? It's being carried away. Then when the wind drops it somewhere else, that is deposition. See what I'm saying? These three processes happen all the time. You don't even know it. Okay? Are we clear on what those three terms mean? At least somewhat? Okay. All right. Turn the page, and then whoever was reading, keep reading, please. Erosion. Sometimes big chunks of rock fall off the sides of mountains. Gravity pulls rocks downhill. Other times, landslides move rocks and soil downhill. Keep going. Rainwater moving over the ground erodes the broken rocks. Water transports rocks into creeks. Water following in the creeks transports broken rocks downstream. The process of erosion continues. Very good. So uh, streams can cause erosion. Gravity can cause erosion. Anything that could cause the rock piece to move from one place to another would be causing erosion. Okay? Davin? Even us? Yep, even you. You can sometimes be an agent of erosion. All right, Bella, pop one to a boy, please. ever picked up a rock from the bottom of a riverbed? Have you ever noticed that they're much smoother than the rocks you find on land? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is why. As the water is running over that rock for however long, let's say years and years, okay, the, it is slowly chipping off little pieces of rock, just like if you were filing your nail or sandpapering uh, sandpaper on wood, okay, that water weathers and erodes the rock. 
causing it, to, causing it to get smoother and smoother. Just like if I had two rocks and I rubbed them together for an hour, right? They would be super smooth on the inside, right? Okay, keep going. Good. Popcorn, please. Very good. You going, Sophie? Okay, that's your warning, okay? When the wind when the wind dies down. Monahan. Very good. So as wind picks up sand, okay, and it deposits it somewhere else. Typically, it deposits, typically sand deposits build over time, right? Forming these small little hills or, or, or sand dunes. They're called dunes of sand, okay? Over much, much time. All right, last thing we're going to look at is glaciers. Raise your hand if you know what a glacier is. Perfect. Okay, glacier is like a frozen river, except that it is actually moving, okay? So it's a massive chunk of moving ice that moves very slowly over a long period of time. All right? Okay, Caleb, keep going. Good. So the way I like to describe it is this. A river running through an area for a long period of time will slowly cut deeper and deeper and deeper into the Earth's surface, right? Okay, but that river or stream only the river or stream will only cut into the ground a small amount, right? Let's say you have like a little river like this, right? And two mountains, okay? A river will form a V-shaped cut into the land. Yes? Okay. Well, the difference is a glacier is much wider and bigger and really kind of more forceful than a river. Okay? So where a river is like drawn, kind of like drawing a line and kind of cutting a line in between two mountains, a glacier is more like a like an ice cream scoop almost. It's called the bulldozer of nature, and this is why. A glacier is much wider. Okay, and it ends up forming a U-shaped valley because that massive chunk of frozen ice has been traveling through that area for such a long time. So it carves a much bigger path than a small river would. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so a glacial valley is U-shaped while a regular valley is just a V-shaped. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. Yep, and we'll see in a video and some pictures here in a minute the difference. Parker? Yep, mm -hmm. you can have a frozen chunk of ocean. Um, Caleb, you just finished reading, correct? Okay, popcorn to a girl, please. We'll finish up. 
Very good. All right, let me show you the video of how glacial valleys are formed, and then we'll look at some landform pictures of different shapes that can be caused by these three processes. Okay? Some of them are kind of wacky looking, so you'll see. <laughs> 